Welcome to this Robismo Cafe Talk with our first ever virtual visit. Today we're going to visit a marine research center in Sweden, on the west coast of Sweden. My name is Thomas Norby and I'm going to be your guide today. I'm a member of the Robismo Consortium. Um, I'm representing SLU, the Swedish Agriculture Research University. The Robismo is a Horizon 2020 project, as you might know. And uh, initially we had planned to do uh, study visits, physical study visits, but those are not easy to do these times, these days. So we have moved to the digital versions. And if, if you give me the next slide, we have uh, the Robismo project works in three sectors, food, bio-based value chains and ecosystem services. And you can find all the information on rubismo.eu. Uh, and we will have one more year uh, to, to uh, discover and share the secrets of business success in modern rural areas. So the next slide is about where we're going today. The first, we've had three lectures, three cafe talks, one each week. We do it every Tuesday at 11 and you'll, we will do so also coming year. It's a 30 minute short session. This session, however, the virtual visit will be 45 minutes, so a bit longer. For those of you who haven't been using Zoom before, you can mute yourself to the bottom left uh, and to the top right, you can change the view, which what you see on, the, on your screen. Today, we have uh, friends with us from Christine Nabari Marine Research and Innovation Center. We have Anne and Martin uh, who, at the center. We have also two businesses with us um, from different uh, working in this, this sector, the marine sector, and we will hear more about that as we go along. And uh, I, the session uh, is recorded for your knowledge uh, and will be available afterwards so you can share with friends and peers. So next slide opens up to Christian Bay. Please, the floor is all yours. Anne and Martin. Welcome to Christian Bay Center. Uh, my name is Martin Schuberg and I'm the manager for this partnership. It's a quite big partnership. Uh, and I try to manage it. I try to manage my colleague Anne. She's the manager in reality. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> I want the answer to that. Uh, my name is Anne Dunnes and I work as a business developer within the Lysekil municipality. But I also work with uh, developing this center that we have here. And in order to give you a chance to understand what uh, we have around here, we have a film that we will start the presentation with. And the film is divided into two parts. The first one is a really classy one that uh, on the outside uh, that has been produced uh, from um, rice. But then as it is Corona and we have not been able to uh, receive visits for quite a long time, we also made a film that will show the, um, what's inside. So please, we start with the film. It's about eight minutes long. Man vet ju väldigt lite om havet egentligen. Havet är väldigt stort, man har lärt sig en del, man lär sig mer och mer, men det finns väldigt lite data i många sammanhang. Så det är väldigt bra att kunna skapa de här data, både samla in miljödata men även få fram information om hur strukturer klarar sig eller produkter klarar sig ute till havs. Kristinberg Center för marin forskning och innovation är ett samarbetsinitiativ mellan KTH, Chalmers, Göteborgs universitet, IVL, RISE, Innovatum och Lysekis kommun. Och gemensamt har vi tagit det här initiativet för att öppna upp och tillgängliggöra mer resurser för marina innovationer och forskning. Och gemensamt hitta nya lösningar för att förändra såväl samhällssystem till att lyfta in ny kunskap 
i våra samhällsbeslut och processer. Här på Kristnöberg så har vi tillgång till infrastruktur som är väldigt svår att hitta på andra ställen. Vi har havet precis utanför vårt kontorsfönster bokstavligen. Vi har tillgång till båtar, till spolrum där vi kan stå och slabba med våra ostron och musslor utan att det stör någon. Och vi har också möjlighet att förvara djur både utomhus och inomhus. Att kunna göra fältprovningar här eller utomhusexponeringar gör ju det möjligt för svensk industri att testa sina produkter i nordiska förhållanden och inte bara skicka ner dem till Europa eller andra testsajt eller komplettera med de resultat man får där. Jag tror att det är viktigt både för svensk industri men också för Europa och världssajts. Det jag vill vara med och bidra till är att skapa den här mötesplatsen eller att Kristine Berg och alla de partner som finns i det får symbolisera mötesplatsen för innovation och jobba mycket med hur skapar vi innovation utifrån företagens utmaningar och behov. Och det här partnerskapet på Kristine Berg ser jag som en fantastisk möjlighet för oss att vara en del av att utveckla framtidens mat från havet. Tillgängliggörandet av mer resurser det är ju en av anledningarna till att RISE engagerar sig i det här arbetet. Att utveckla det här området till ett viktigt centra för avancerad forskning och drivande av framtidens innovationer inom det marina området. Hej, jag heter Ann Gunnes och är anställd av Lysekils kommun och jobbar för utvecklingen av Kristinebergs center. Vi ska alldeles strax gå in i huset, men innan vi gör det så titta lite extra på det grå huset där borta. Det ser ut som ett utedass så man kan tänka att det är inte är mycket för världen, men där är något rätt unikt. Där på havets botten, 30 meter djup, ligger en fiberkabel som man utifrån plug and play princip kan koppla på olika typer av teknisk utrustning. Så som till exempel optik, sonar, hydrofon och sensorer. Ska vi ta och gå in? Och första anhalten, det är intagshallen. Och det är här när båtarna kommer och lägger till här och har med sig olika typer av växter och djur så är det här som man tar in dem. Och här finns ju då möjlighet att kunna stå och slabba lite grann hur man vill när man vill göra de första proverna eller vad det nu är man gör. I intagshallen så finns det en rad olika akvarier som ni ser som visar olika miljöer och djur som finns precis rakt utanför. Och det vi ser här det är Chalmers som tillsammans med Tyska institutet Geomar har genomfört tester för att skapa nya sensorer för mätning av närsalter. Och då går vi vidare och tittar på lite olika rum som vi har här i källaren. Och i det här huset så finns det inte bara kunskap utan det finns också en herrans massa rör. Uppskattningsvis så är det flera kilometer rör med saltvattenintag ifrån olika nivåer som finns här. I det här rummet så ja det här är egentligen ett av våra skolexempel på hur vi vill arbeta inom Kristinebergs center. Ett inkubatorbolag hos Innovatum som heter Bohus Culture hyr här inne två kvadratmeter där de sättlar eh, sporer för alger. Där de då alltså nyttjar den kapaciteten som finns här med tillgång på kontrollerade förhållanden för att sen kunna stoppa ut algsporer i havet. Det är alltså resultatet av ett gemensamt forskningsprojekt bland partnerskapet som har resulterat i idéer som företag tar vidare. Och det här som de gör då, det är inne i ett termokonstantrum och det betyder att det finns möjlighet i det här rummet att sätta temperatur på både luft, ytvatten och djupvatten. Det finns i huset i källaren här en åtta termokonstantrum som är av olika storlek. Det finns också spolhallar med möjlighet att eh, fritt laborera med vatten. Det fina med de här rummen det är att de är helt och hållet flexibla. Det vill säga det finns tillgång till vatten. 
på en rad olika möjligheter men all annan utrustning som vi stoppar in, hyllor, bord, bänkar, vad det nu kan vara, det är, allt går att ta ut. Så vi kan alltså designa, utforma experimenten, testerna, precis så som vi vill ha dem. Och det här är ju då en resurs för hela Sverige. Det är inte bara för bolag och intressenter i Västra Götaland. Utan till exempel så jobbar vi ihop med ett inkubatorbolag från KTH som heter Volta Green Tech. För det finns mycket bra saker i Stockholm men något som ni inte har det är saltvatten. Och här inne i Mesokosmerummet här håller Diana Perry från SLU till. Hon nyttjar rummet för att göra tester på torskar med olika surhetsgrader på vattnet. Alltså helt enkelt vad händer i klimatförändringens spår. Okej, välkomna upp på övervåningen av Vinterlaboratoriet. Det här är en av de äldsta byggnaderna här på Kristineberg. Jag heter Fredrik Röndal, jag jobbar på KTH och i Kristinebergscentret har jag hand om forskningssamordningen med våra olika parter. Jag tänkte berätta lite här om stationen. Den här är, har nästan en 140-årig tradition av forskning. Och det är inte bara så att man har upptäckt nya arter och sånt här utan man har också jobbat mycket med medicinsk forskning. Förstått hur nerver fungerar, hur transmittersubstanser fungerar. Mycket som medicinsk grundforskning har skett här på stationen. Idag så har vi kommit in på mer miljöforskning och sådana saker. Vi jobbar med havsförsurning, övergödning, miljögifter och vi har nu börjat också med vattenbruk och algodling och sådana här saker. Så att när man jobbar här så hakar man i en väldigt lång forskningstradition. Okej, nu har vi ju lämnat vinterlaboratoriet som var den äldsta byggnaden och gått in i det moderna labbet. Och faktiskt är Kristinberg en av de äldsta i världen men också en av de nyaste. Och här ser vi nu ett väldigt avancerat elektronmikroskop för att leta efter mikroplaster. Och det är bara ett exempel på sån tung, dyr utrustning som finns på station. Mm. Ja, här inne har vi ett kurslab och här just nu pågår en undervisning med en internationell grupp från USA då, som visar på den här internationella atmosfären som finns här på station. And now she's back. She's very quick. Uh... What, what we're doing at the Christian Bar is, uh, first of all, to open up all the resources for, from uh, research for companies. Big companies, small companies and startup companies. Both in the form of test, lab and demonstration, and infrastructures such as boat and diving sensors and so on and also to make the competence from uh, uh, the universities and uh, from special researchers available for companies. We have also gathered partnerships uh, expertise within business development and we're also creating an innovation arena where we uh, try We have workshops and different ideation uh, tools to make uh, possibilities from science or uh, challenges from society into uh, new innovations, ideas and new businesses. And I would say that that's the best part of uh, Christina Berg Center, the collaboration that we have around the, the center that there are uh, many partners within academia and uh, research and that through all that chain we have competence from very early research to the uh, competence that you need to develop business and also to develop uh, um, products and It's also a very good thing that we have more or less everything here. That we have the possibility to have uh, conferences. Uh, we have a lot of uh, lodging possibilities. 
food, <laughs> divers, boats, and so on. It's a good, very good mixture of infrastructure and facilities that we want to use. So the main thing what we have been doing the last two years is that we open up the station from being a more closed research station to be a center for marine research and innovation. And, and it's not just from the science to companies, it's also the opposite. New ideas and innovations and new business models also turn into new science projects. So what we do here, we have rebuilt the environment. So we also have an open office, has co-working spaces. Uh, we have uh, different knowledge activities. Uh, and we already have some 140 years, a very international community of science researchers being here. Uh, and now we're doing the same for the companies. We have uh, in our infrastructure here from, uh, as, yes, as Anne said, we have lodging, restaurants, uh, diving centers, small boats, big boats, drones, uh, everything that you can need. And we also open up the different lab facilities for both indoors uh, and outdoors in the sea. And we have together in the partnership uh, support for uh, developing the test, to run the tests, uh, validation of the, uh, and verification of the results. And also with all the small companies around in the communities around us, we can also set up uh, help to, con to build the prototypes. Uh, we have gathered the innovation support and the incubators and science parks in Sweden, uh, together with uh, RISE uh, expertise in innovation and business support. So we can also offer a, a complete expertise in, that, uh, in business and innovation development. Uh, and also when it comes to market get in uh, investors and with the help of the uh, society around us we can also support with uh, establish your business get the permits you need and find good locations during the years we have been running a lot of different innovation workshops everything from how you can use a bridge for other business purposes uh, into uh, different challenges from uh, companies, uh, challenges from authorities that ended up in both a big collaboration uh, project like Big Horizon projects, but uh, also small new businesses between different companies and we started with this uh, marine biological station here from the beginning uh, and now building the same system uh, national around Sweden with cooperating with uh, different science environments and so on and try to open up and make all the resources available. And we do the same thing on a European and international level. Uh, we start uh, collaboration with, uh, for example, Peniche in Portugal, uh, Ireland, uh, and Italy. And at the same time, we are building uh, a network and a fast track to different markets. And one of the reasons uh, that the, um, the municipality is involved in this, of course, it's also for our uh, educations, 
that we have on college level and so on. But the main part is that we want this to create businesses and um, working possibilities. And uh, in the film, you uh, heard two company names, uh, Boa Secreture and Volta Green Tech. There are two of the companies and examples for, uh, on uh, with, uh, what companies we have been working with, sorry. Uh, in the film, we uh, mentioned incubator companies, but it was some time since we did the film, so neither of the companies are uh, incubator companies today. They have uh, reached another level, and it's very nice to see the involvement that they are doing. So please, Bengt. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'll try to give some short description of the Boosie Culture Company. And we started some, next slide. Uh, we started some four or five years ago on the Swedish West Coast. And really we were inspired by the people from Christina Berg. Fredrik, who you saw there, he was out on our small island and presented the algae and seaweed production and how you can work with that. So from there, we formed a company. We are five persons with various competences, everything from marketing and sales to actually mar marine biologists and, uh, and also to make um, rigs and things out in the ocean. Today, we this year or this season, we are producing some five tons of um, uh, seaweed. And for next season, we are aiming at 15 tons. And if we get a lot of customers and all, we will expand more than 30 tons. But there is some obstacles like the uh, permits we need to actually start the, the growing facilities. So, but. It's been a very interesting journey and uh, the cooperation we had with Christina Berg has really been crucial. And um, I think next slide we can see. So uh, we worked with Christina Berg on how to produce, but we also worked with, with Ann and, uh, and the local community to find facilities and how to work with things. And really to grow seaweed, seaweed is really, in line with everything right now. It's climate smart food products. It takes up CO2, phosphorus and nitrogen, as you know, and it really is helping to uh, get, reduce the over fertilization in the sea. Uh, no irrigation, no land required. So it's, it's really a super food. Next slide there. <clears throat> so this is how it looks when we have had it in the water for some four to four months, and so it grows very quickly and gives a lot of biomass. This is uh, Saccharina latissima, sugar kale, which is very, it's one of the better ads. It grows quite fast. It gives a good taste to food products. So that's what we've been focusing on so far. And what you saw in the lab and showed is the, when we put the seedlings on a small line, that line goes to a bigger line in the ocean, and that's how we grow it. And you see here uh, the bigger line getting out of the water. Next slide. So one could think, uh, how do you, how do we get this to the market? Yeah, it's um, it's when we started some four or five years ago, people were really shaking their head or lifting their eyebrows, and what are you doing? Seaweed to eat. But in the last six months, I think, or eight months, there have been several TV programs. This master chef has had uh, seaweed in the foods and there's so much seaweed. So it's really paving uh, well for a marketing production. And just a few months ago, Orkla, which is like the Nestle of the Nordic, it's a, the big food company. They actually invested in the company, a Norwegian company who is actually doing exactly what we are doing. So there's a, a lot of promotion about um, seaweed and, and growing and algae. Uh, next slide. So what do we want to, uh, what the consumers should do is, 
have this as a as an ingredient or actually put it in salads. But and we this year this season we actually introduced a small uh, canister with salted seaweed, salted uh, sugar kelp, and it's been very well uh, received by the consumer. But you can also see that consumers today they don't want to take raw materials and make their own food. They want something really ready to, to eat from the shelf. So we are working with different uh, food producers to find, you know, like uh, rucola, tapenade, mustard, or different other um, seafood um, dishes that so we can come out with the, with the sugar kelp to the market. There is also snacks and so on. So many, many opportunities, but so far, uh, the real push from the feed uh, from the food industry has been they are slow to change and to get it into the food chain is, is not so easy. So it's still a struggle to get it out to the market, even though there has been a lot of publicity. Okay, I think that's my five minutes. Uh, so next uh, uh, guy is Fredrik Okerman from Volta Green. Thank you. Um, thank you, Bengt. Um, I'm the founder of Volta Green Tech, and we're working on making cows fart and burp less methane gas, greenhouse gas. And um, just to give some background, because I, I know it sounds a bit weird, but just to give some background, there are 1.5 billion cows on the planet, and together they are burping out and farting out 5% of the total greenhouse gas emissions. And that's two times more than the world's fleet of airplanes. Um, but what's more crazy is that there have really been no solutions on how to reduce these type of emissions. Um, and it's really bad for the climate. Um, but six years ago, a group of researchers in Australia found that if you add a tiny, tiny bit of a specific type of seaweed to the cow's diet, you can drastically reduce the, the methane emissions up to 90%. So basically all the emissions from the cows, from the burps, can be reduced by just adding a tiny bit of seaweed to the cow's uh, diet. And um, there has been plenty of research on this from Australia, from Sweden, from, from the US and, and from some parts of Europe. Um, and the solution have a really huge potential. But the problem is that this specific seaweed, Aspargopsis, have never really been commercialized and produced at scale. So we can't really go to Alibaba or eBay or Amazon and order a lot of seaweed. Someone had to produce it. Um, so when, when I was reading about all this research a few years ago, uh, I, was, I was studying uh, electrical engineering. So it's very far away from, from cows and, and seaweed. But uh, I decided to drop out from the studies and together with my, my co-founders, Leo and Angelo, um, to start Volta Green Tech to, to see how we can get this solution out to as many farms and cows as possible. And uh, we started the company two years ago and are based in, in Stockholm, but now also in Lysekil, um, because we had no experience of seaweed at all. Um, Andrew, he had, he had been doing some biology research, um, but we didn't have any seaweed background. So we, <laughs> in our lab, in, we, we set up a lab in, in Stockholm in a basement in the middle of the city, and then we realized that we need salt water and we don't have salt water in Stockholm. We just have it on the West Coast. Um, and we got in contact with uh, Anne and, and Martin at Christine de Berg. And uh, it was amazing to see that there is like this, uh, this, this hub in Sweden that are experts on marine biology. So for, for some time we were driving with our car back and forth uh, getting seawater from uh, Christine de Berg to, to Stockholm. But after a while, uh, Anne told us that isn't it time that, that you move to the West Coast, to Lisa Shield? And uh, it was about time because we, uh, we had done a lot of research on the algae and we felt that we were on the stage now where we could uh, scale up the, the solution and, and scale up the production of the seaweed. Um, so Christine Berry helped us finding a good location uh, on the West Coast in Lisa Shield. Uh, so now we're building our first land-based uh, factory of this specific seaweed aspergopsis. Um, and, and the goal is to, to, to grow as much seaweed as we can in this facility and then use this as a, as a blueprint for, for larger 
factories because there are a lot of cows on the planet um, and a lot of cows that need to eat this seaweed. Um, but now we also have recruited a team of, of um, experts. So we have marine biologists coming from Australia, from Greece and from Spain that now are working here in Sweden. And, uh, and one of the researchers, uh, Elena, she was doing research at Christina Berg before, before joining our company. Um, and, uh, and now we have a lot of work in front of us in, in finding the economical incentives for, for farmers to actually use the solution to reduce methane. Uh, and, and reduce the climate footprint. Um, so we're working with the, the larger uh, retail, food retail change in Sweden to basically develop the, the, the most environmentally friendly milk and meat that can go out to consumers. Um, so hopefully in, in some time you will be able to, whenever you go to the grocery store and, and buy milk or cheese or meat, that that product will have been coming from cows that have been much more environmentally friendly because they have been eating seaweed produced in, in Lysishi. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it from Volta Green Tech. Thank you very much.